Okay, welcome to the Comp 1 Exam 2011 Pests, where we're looking at the Cricket Dice Game. Uh, for this particular pest, I'm not really going to look at the Dice Game, I'm just going to look at the gem ge general bubble sort algorithm. It's not going to be a full-on bubble sort tutorial, but I ought to introduce it before we go on to sorting an array of records. Um, so, this is to quickly go over the basics applied to VB. If you have no idea what bubble sort is, hit YouTube, type in bubble sort, there's tons. Everything from Eastern European dancers showing how bubble sort works, through to some good honest tutorials, to VB stuff, there's loads and loads and loads of bubble sort tutorials. That's not what this is going to be. I'm just going to run my code so that we can then apply to the array of records. Really quickly, this is the most basic way I could ex express uh, bubble sort. It's, it's probably a bit oversimplified. Oh, it's probably a bit oversimplified. <coughs> but uh, effectively, I'm going to have this boolean, which I'm going to set to false, and then I've got a nested loop. Do loop here, which will keep going until that, that boolean stays as false. I'll explain that in a moment. The nested for loop looks at every single array element, and it simply asks, is the next element bigger than the current element? If it is, then swap them and then set this boolean as true. Go to next, go to the next array element. Is the next one bigger than this one? If it is, swap it, if it isn't, ignore it. And then just keep going round here. Once it's been through the array once, if there has been a single swap, then swapped will be true. If swapped is true, we go back up to the top, we do the whole shebang again. And we keep going through until swapped equals false, i.e there isn't a situation where the next element is bigger than the current one. If that's true, they must be in order. How does that look in VB? OK, we've got some variables we have to declare. And what since I've initialized a couple of them. I've whacked a load of numbers into an array. So that's the zeroth element, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've set sorting elements, i.e. the number of elements is 6, just so it knows it. Um, I've obviously created the boolean, and uh, there's a temporary as well, which I'll explain in a moment. This is identical to the previous, but with a couple of teeny little exceptions. Um, within this, I've got, rather than going all the way through the array, if you think about it, if I'm going to ask about the element plus one, it makes no sense to ask about this last element here. If I'm asking about the last element, there isn't a next element. So I'm actually going to start one short. So sorting elements minus one. Other than that, the swap, you have to be a bit sneaky. I have a temporary. The current array element is stuck into the temporary. I can then put my next array element into the current array element. I then write my temporary back to the next array element. Because if you think about it, if I was to oh, just try and swap them, I would end up overwriting the contents of one of the array elements before I had a chance to pass it on to the other one. Um, and then one last little thing. I decrease the number of sorting elements each time. doesn't mean I'm making the array smaller. It just means if I've already worked out that the smallest number is here, I don't bother checking it again. We'll see that in a moment. Right, let's cut to the code. And uh, you can see this is identical code. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck a breakpoint in here. And you notice I'm going from the zeroth element to... Well, well, we'll see it in a moment. Let's run the code. OK, I'm, I'm not going to bother having a console window at all for this. I'm just going to sort of debug it. So I'm going to add a watch. Uh, add a watch to this. Bang. Open that up. And I can see the contents of my array down here. I'm going to, Just for the first go through the entire do loop, I'm going to step through the code. Step into. So let's see what happens. OK, so if... The current element is smaller than the next element, well, 2 is smaller than 4, then run this bit. So now let's swap them over. And we can see there that the 4 and the 2 have been swapped over. OK, is 2 smaller than 3? Well, it is, so that should swap it over. And it does. Is 2 smaller than 7? It is, absolutely. So this is a sort of downward bubble sort. I'm moving the smallest numbers to the bottom. Is 2 smaller than 1? No, it's not, so it should ignore that. 
and it does. Is one smaller than nine? Yep, it is, so it swaps those over. Is one smaller than six? Absolutely. Smashing, that's also done it. Now we should pop to the bottom. Swapped equals false, so we should go back up to the top. It is. So we've now definitely got the smallest number at the bottom. And that's what bubble sort's all about. Getting either the biggest number to the top or the smallest number to the bottom, it doesn't really matter. We've got we've got heavy bubbles for this particular example. Um, rather than doing that step into all the time, I'm now going to hit the, the, the continue button, which will move me back to here, but run all the way through that loop once. So what we should see happen next is two basically move down to the bottom. Lots of other swaps. Let's see what happens. Bang. You notice the two move to the bottom. The four didn't get touched, simply because in this particular case it didn't need to be. Let's move it again. Oh, this time the three's at the bottom if you look. The four did get swapped that time. Move it again. Oh, the four's at the bottom now. Next time I'm expecting this seven to move down, and that's probably the end of the program maybe. Let's have a little look. Seven, nine. So if I run this once more, there should be no swaps. In fact, let's let's do it. Let's go bang, bang, bang. Nothing happens. Now, this time, swapped is still false. Look, swapped is set false to there. It's still false. So if I step through, it actually ends the program. It knows that there were no stops, no swaps to make. So it doesn't bother checking the whole array again. So this is a slight improvement on the, uh, the most basic version of the bubble sort, but this is almost certainly the one that you're going to need to be referred to. So what the bubble sort does is take the smallest number, or the biggest number, whatever, however you set it up, stick it to the bottom, then again, then again, then again, then again, until you've got all your numbers in order. Next time we're actually going to look to see how we can apply this to an array of records, and I'll actually use the cricket game to demo that so you can see how to program uh, an array of records with two fields and have them sorted on one of those fields.